an award for him. Oh. Right. That's reminded me to say the first bit. <laughs> Let me just click the screen. This meeting will be recorded. Um, it will go on the council website. If for any reason you're uncomfortable with being on the screen, you're very welcome to turn your camera off. You're very welcome to change your name on the screen. If for any reason you don't want to be on a recording, that's absolutely fine. No one will take offence to that. Um, oh, I'm out of breath. Um, yeah, so I'm Ollie Armstrong. If you didn't know already, I'm the Northfield Ward Councillor. The reason we haven't had meetings for quite some time is I've been quite unwell uh, with long COVID. Um, I've been a fair bit better, but ironically, just in time for this meeting, the last few days have been really tough. Just to kind of give you some clarity on what that means, sometimes my memory isn't working great at the minute, and my focus is impaired, and uh, I'm quite often out of breath, like now, just going down the stairs to get a banana for my child. So COVID is still a very real thing. Uh, let's still be really vigilant. Um, and yeah, apologies for not having a meeting for a while, but it's because I have been off and on sick for some time. Uh, yeah, that's all the bits. So today we've got a few people to speak. Um, I'm really keen just to take any questions or issues, just to say um, that, yeah, although we haven't had any meetings, and although I have been ill, I have continued to field many uh, casework questions over the past year. And as I'm sure many of you have noticed, you may not have, but I'm sure you have, loads of people are incredibly desperate. So not only do we have the, the ongoing things like um, making sure our bins are cleared, making sure that we're not getting cars parked up on uh, pavements, you know, people having issues with trees, pushing up their walls, all those things are deeply valid and really important and I try and resolve them. But we've got absolutely loads of people right on the, the, the brink of poverty and right under it. Loads of kids struggling for food. Uh, we've got loads of people out of work. So just so you know what I'm doing with my time as your counsellor, as well as all the normal things we've been doing for a while, there's a huge array of people absolutely destitute and I'm doing my best to help them with all of those issues too. It's been an incredibly tough time. So gonna move on to our agenda. First people we've got feeding back to us tonight is two of our local police officers. Uh, I must apologize, I've not written your names down. So if you'd like to introduce yourselves and run through your police report, then residents can ask any questions. you Can you hear us okay? Yes, thank you. Yep, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, I'm PC Nally and I'm here with my colleague. I'm PC Siggins. Um, so we're here in the absence of Police Sergeant Taylor, who's the Ward Sergeant for Northfield. Um, he's on annual leave at the moment. Um, but just to give you a short run through of policing in the last five or six months, uh, since April, uh, neighbourhood policing has been moved to cover response jobs uh, due to the uplift in demand over the summer months, hence why a lot of neighbourhood uh, issues or policing um, have been sort of put on the back burner um, since April. But as of a few weeks ago, neighbour teams were then protected again to do neighbourhood issues. So um, you'll see a lot more of us out and about in a more proactive role rather than the reactive response. Um, and uh, if you have any queries, then we'll do our best to help you. If not, we can try and direct you uh, to the right person. Thank you both. Um, does anyone have any questions? I do have a couple, but I'll take any from uh, anyone here first. Ali, could I ask a quick question, please? Yes. Um, hello. Um, this is actually um, as a citizen, um, but th there's been um, that I'm aware of over 20 street robberies in the area um, recently. Um, and I know the police are doing everything they can uh, in order to um, ensure that the, the people that are doing this are, are caught. Um, one of my main concerns is that I'm aware that it's being very much targeted on children that are walking home from school or students that are leaving college. Um, and I wondered if there was anything that could be done um, to sort of make people aware that, that this is happening and the people that are doing this haven't yet been caught. 
Thanks, Lewis. We'll take one question at a time, just because I think these are often really important questions. So if you guys could feedback on that one, that would be great. Yep. Um, I'm aware that uh, the neighbouring Kings and Orson team um, and the rest of us have also been focusing on these robberies. We are aware of them. Um, and a specialist team was brought down yesterday to the area um, to target those robberies. Um, in response to making children's schools and colleges aware, um, we are tasking members of the teams to be visible around school opening and closing times. Um, and hopefully that's something we'll continue to do. Um, if our mere presence alone will put people off, the offenders off. Um, but we are aware of it and it is something we are trying to uh, work. We, we also have a schools officer, um, PC Shakespeare, who obviously works very closely with the schools and he obviously is making them aware of what's going on. We are only small teams, but we are trying our utmost to be outside the school gates. Well, obviously, when schools are kicking out and where the, where the children congregate. But obviously, we can only be in so many places at once, but it's hoping that we're in the right place at the right time, really. I, I would just like it um, sort of documented, Ali, that, um, I mean, my, my son was actually mugged um, on last Friday. Um, it was an absolutely horrendous experience, not just for him, but for the whole family. Um, when we actually called the police, um, nobody came to us at the at that time um but what i will say is that since that time i know that the police have been doing everything they can their utmost to, to catch these people and i just want to say thank you to everybody involved in that for, for doing that um but I, what i would say is that maybe some communication with the victims would have been a little bit better because obviously we've got 20 victims you know in the area at the moment they're extremely um you know, feeling very vulnerable and, and actually scared to leave the house. Yeah, so Lewis, I'm going to respond first. I just want to say I'm really sorry that's happened to your lad. That's absolutely, I vividly remember it happening to me, right, when I was in my mid-teens. It's, it's absolutely horrendous. I'm so sorry. Um, I wasn't aware of, of all of these cases, so I'd be more than happy to chat and look to maybe broker a conversation with the police and work out how we get some really clear communication with residents. In fact, can, is that okay with both the officers on the call and Lewis, if we document that and then call some kind of conversation after this meeting, please? I'd be more than happy. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Thank you. That's really helpful. I do have a couple of questions, but I did. I think I saw Roger's hand up. Thanks for that, yes. Roger. Th thanks, Ollie. Um, this may seem trivial compared with what we've just heard, but I, I seem to uh, believe and uh, hear that we're subject of a plague of motorbike users who seem to be racing up and down Tesla Lane and other roads in the uh, ward at breakneck speeds. Some of them have got L plates on, so uh, clearly they've no idea of their responsibility in terms of speed limits. Um, and I just wonder whether this has come up on the police radar, whether they're able to take some action to contain these characters. Um, sometimes on a, a, a lighter evening, just a few weeks ago, because we're now getting to the dark periods, um, the, the sound of motorbikes screaming and roaring around the area has got very uh, evasive. And uh, obviously it represents speed and uh, the use of a motorbike in an unfriendly uh, way uh, and irresponsible way. Um, these are normally sort of uh, small engined uh, bikes, um, but in Tesla Lane, many times we've seen them going up the road on one wheel uh, as if it's some kind of um, macho demonstration of virility. Um, is there, has there been any attempt to contain this or has anybody else reported it or is it just me getting old? I'm going to come in first. It's not you getting old. That was my second point of the questions I'm going to raise. So there's a, it's not just that they're revving their engines and going fast up the road and going fast is dangerous enough. Um, there's, a, there's an increase in them cutting through lights, as you said, um, pulling wheelies. Uh, and driving towards people at speed. I think it's fairly seasonal, to be honest. We get it each year, 
Um, but if our officers could reply to that, and I know it's really hard to get them, right, to kind of do anything about it unless you take the bikes from them at home. It's hard to catch a kid on a bike. Uh, yeah, we are aware of the issues. Um, our PCSOs, you may or may not be aware, run a speed watch scheme that can involve local residents um, using the speed guns um, that you may have seen at the roadside. Um, so if anyone is interested in being involved in that, then um, do let me know and I can pass on your details. The issues like you alluded to, Ollie, with bikes are one, they can get away as soon as you see them because they can go down alleyways and footpaths and whatever. Um, but one of the bigger issues with for us is the health and safety around um, sort of stopping bikes and um, pursuing them. You have to have um, certain training and um, qualifications that on a neighbourhood team, um, we just don't have the capability um, to All the do. Vehicles. All the vehicles to do. Because um, whilst we want to catch them, we also need to be conscious about um, their health and safety as well. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I know where, where I grew up in the northeast, there was a spate of car thefts, and I vividly remember two lads sadly died. I mean, they were doing a terrible thing. They shouldn't have stole the car. They shouldn't have been driving fast, but there was a big police chase, and they flipped top of my street. Both lads died, so I totally appreciate, you know, you're balancing that. And for yourselves, right, as officers, to get that right happening with vehicles moving at speed protect life okay my other two quick questions were there's been um as well as a spate of muggings there's sadly been a spate of high-end cars taken off drives and, and people being broken into doing the keys taken away i think there's been at least 20 in the the block around where myself Jerry, and roger live so has there been any, is there any feedback on that that i can put back to the residents as to how the police have responded Uh, again, uh, we are aware of it. Um, before, uh, when we could do more proactive work before we moved to Ross Bunch jobs, um, we were focusing a lot around uh, vehicle crime. Um, and in fact, tonight, two of us are on until the early hours of the morning um, to prevent these burglaries and car thefts as well. Um, so it's something we're trying to do um, to deal with. Um, and I know the traffic teams um, focusing on it a lot, um, but it is just such a widespread problem, and it takes seconds for them to turn up and disappear. Um, so we we are dealing with, it and it's a problem that we want to sort. It's just um, a lot of it can be being in the right place at the right time, which um, is unfortunate, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um... How, how are these car thefts actually happening? I mean, are, you mentioned 20 in the immediate environment of um, Hanging Lane, Tessel Lane and uh, Bodnam and areas like that. Um, and high value cars. Well, I'm disappointed mine isn't a high value one, but perhaps I'm comforted by it. Um, how and, and what are they? How are they able to do this uh, just to, to smash windows or to jack the car up or? use one of these electronic devices to get the key code. Uh, it'd be interesting to know because we could take some action and advise the local community of what they can do to make their cars more secure. Is an additional safety lock on the steering wheel a good idea? Because if so, we need to help ourselves because we can't expect the police to be there all the time. But, you know, uh, we need to take action ourselves, perhaps as much as possible, to make our cars as thief proof as we can. Just to say before the officers come in, I know those are my street. So I, the reason I knew is I'm in the WhatsApp group for a few of the roads around us. Sadly, people came through the door and took the keys. And rightly so, the advice is keep your keys by the door. So if someone breaks in, they don't harm you. They just take your car because your life is worth more than your car. But even with putting an extra lock on, if you know they're going to want the key for that too. I don't know if the officers have got further info, but I know that's what's happened on, on my roads, that people have come through the door and taken the keys. Uh, yep, um, in certain scenarios it is that they will, the offenders will burgle the house um, just for the cars, uh, the keys for the cars on the drive. Um, other scenarios, a lot of cars now are keyless entry, so they'll come up to your front door with what looks like a laptop bag, and that boosts the signal from your uh, key fob 
to the vehicle, unlocks it, and off they go. Um, other incidents we've had are um, victims have left their cars running, either they've just popped back into the house for a few moments, um, or they're, you know, like in the winter, defrosting the ice on the, the windscreen. And uh, offenders will just be walking past, jumping it, and off they go, and you never see it again. Um, we do, some of you may or may not be on it, um, have a WM Now messaging program where we message out one, what's going out in the community, um, but also ways in which you can stop uh, or protect yourself and your family. So um, you can put bollards on your drive, disc locks on your steering wheels, uh, ring Farad doorbells. Faraday put pouches for the keys. Yeah, my colleagues, Faraday pouches for your keyless car keys. Um, there are a, a real wealth of, of ways yeah. you can use good lighting as well. All just puts the doubt in the offenders' minds. There's also advice on the West Midlands Police website of how you can make your car that much safer and what you can do to obviously help your security at home. Let's try to see if I find the link. I can't. Thank you. If you do find any links, feel free to put them in the um in the chat, um, or you can email them through and, and Kay can email them through to both those on the call and those who couldn't make it today. Sorry, he's looking at the agenda. I think that's all the questions. Oh, no, sorry, Paul Scott had one as well. Paul, do you want to come on and ask it? You've put it in the chat. I can read it out if you don't. Yeah, hi, Ali. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm happy to ask it, thanks. Thank you. Um, we, we, I live on Mars Road, and we had the police support us with some issues with a HMO or two. Um, but at the time, Sergeant Taylor, I think it was, was saying that he was um, pretty understaffed as far as his team were concerned. Uh, and I was just wondering whether anything's changed since and whether you're seeing the, the numbers of, of recruits and, and police increasing again now. So a question to uh, PC Nally and PC Siggins, I guess. Yeah, good evening, Paul. Um, also, I don't know the full details around what uh, Sergeant Taylor said to you or when he said that to you, but um, we have since... Um, August time, July, August time, had a big decline in the number of officers on our team. Um, but we are due to get three more officers, one PCSO and two uh, police officers um, in the next month to two months. Um, so again, hopefully that will have us back. And we have also been affected by long COVID as well, with uh, sadly with one member of our team. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, policing is short staffed all over um so he's certainly not the only person um that will feel the sort of negative side of understaffing um but we did try our best where we can just in re response paul obviously we had a lot of dealings with the hmos on on mars road when the problems were occurring are these public problems starting up again are they are they starting to cause more issues um I, no they're not things have been quiet recently um uh, thanks for asking and um i think it's a combination of um, probably the association's taking more ownership uh, and the, they seem to be not so fully occupied so whether that's a reason I really don't know but um, they, they've been better than they have um, we still have concerns when a house and a house in the row has gone up for sale and sold in three hours recently and, and with elderly neighbours each side they're suddenly starting to worry about what's going to happen to the house and, and that sort of thing but in the main it, it's it is much better than it was so you know thanks to your efforts and, and um councillor armstrong's efforts and, and the residents as well i think um it is it's been a, a much better place yeah it would be interesting you know, if the management company changed you know i mean I and mean, sadly some of the hmos are, are you know filled with people who need extra help We've got a yeah. whole, whole range of mental health issues and have absolutely none of the support they promised and of course, that then falls on the police and the residents. I know, I know. Over the full lockdown, when we were running the Northfield Food Service, we were providing a huge amount of food when actually they should have been provided by some of the HMO support who were getting paid a huge amount of money to support him. But that's a whole other problem. So we'll not. Oh yeah. We'll not <laughs> don't, don't get us started on that. Structural. We'll never, fit any, we'll never fit anything social, else yeah. on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Privatisation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Well, if I can just interject there once more, sorry, Ali. 
if, if it does come out that the house that's just sold does become another HMO, if you could drop an email into us at the Northfield Neighbourhood team just to make us aware, because obviously we're not always made aware of these things until they're, they're a problem. So if it is a HMO, it's something that we'd be interested to know so we can get in there and obviously speak to the people that are there before it does become a problem. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank you very much. And, and to be honest, we'll probably let you know before it does become an HMO because neighbours being neighbours, we have a, a local WhatsApp group as well for support and we'll just keep an eye out on any development work that we see being carried out. And, and we'll also Absolutely. lodge it with the council as well, just in case the planning is, is not approved or it's it's being converted without the proper regulation. And the, no, just to say, and they might be lovely, they might be really nice people and they might have all the support they need. So let's not presume that they do need anything. Absolutely. Be on social support. Uh, Kirsten's really kindly put uh, some security. Thank you uh, for that, Kirsten. Uh, car security tips can be found here. It's in the chat. Um, Kate, if we email that out as well and in the follow-up in the minutes, that would be really helpful. Um, brilliant. I think that's all the questions for the police. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. You're very welcome to stay, but you don't have to. You've got plenty to do. Um, yeah, do what you wish. Uh, the thank next you very much. Thank you. Are you Sorry. welcome? Sorry, no, no, just thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for and uh, thank you for raising your issues as well, because um, we are here to help. So please do. Yeah, feel free to message us anytime. Thank you. It's lovely to have you on the call. The next yeah. point on the agenda is Jerry, you've got a few things you wanted to run through. Um, so do you want to run through your your points, either questions or, or points you wanted to make? Um, and then I'll respond with some bits of that. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Jerry. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Ollie. Um, I'm afraid I've hogged the agenda tonight, so apologies. Um, King George V pub, which many of you should be able to identify. Um, it's a fire hazard. It's a rodent hazard. It's been empty for four years. Um, some of you may know that the local planning enforcement officer opened their file in 2017, which is four years ago. Um, in, I think it was February or March this year, the council served an enforcement notice after a four year delay. Under the Town and Country Planning Act, uh, Section 215, what's called loss of amenity. In other words, it looks a mess. It will devalue the properties in the immediate vicinity by about five or ten thousand pounds. Um, it's been vandalized, it's grade two listed. Purely by coincidence, after about 25 emails, uh, I had one from the officer this afternoon stating that. Uh, although it's supposed to be confidential, if refer the matter to the legal department, which I think is council speak for, um, there will be a prosecution. Now, unfortunately, I think uh, the court only has the power to impose a financial penalty. He can't send the uh, site owner to prison, regrettably, which I think should be the case. Um, so there's two aspects. One is the um, a criminal prosecution and what I presume would happen would be that the council would have to prosecute prior to doing the works in default because the cost of those works because they would have to employ specialist contractors you know all about windows and so on it would be absolutely enormous so I presume that is what they um, are in prospect um, the other aspect, of course, is the future usage of the site. Um, there have been a number of suggestions. My view, uh, rather predictably, is that it should be used for the vulnerable and the homeless. I think it'd be absolutely ideal. As that client group won't possess a car, so they won't add to the traffic saturation problem. Uh, but I think that is possibly down the line into next year, the latter part. The important thing, I think, is um just to note that after a four-year delay uh the reason which are not entirely clear but um it is uh, some progress has been made 
Thanks, Jerry. So I asked one of the officers, in fact, the one you were talking to, whose name I've forgotten, I asked an officer to come and do a report at this meeting. Um, he said that he can't, he couldn't come to a ward forum. To be fair, I asked him very late notice, but that wasn't the reason he said he couldn't. He said he couldn't come and talk about an open investigation. Let me just check. An active case. Well, it seems strange because it's been an active case for a while and we've had we've had officers on to talk about it before, I think. Well, the, they will talk about it till kingdom come. I mean, the problem we have is that we have an enforcement crisis and we don't want to talk about it. You mentioned HMOs. They're part of the enforcement process. This is planning enforcement. It doesn't take... We need an answer, not from the officer, but from the relevant uh, cabinet member, why it should take four years before they serve a notice. And it's completely contrary to the public interest. I mean, Roger, Will have, I'm sure he remembers the day, will have voted for this legislation in 1990 when he was the MP. The, the point of any legislation is it's supposed to benefit the general public. And so we're saying it's Roger's fault or not Roger's fault? What's Roger being blamed for here? Ro Roger, when he was the MP, I guess, unless he opposed it, would have voted for the Town and Country Planning Act. Roger wants to that. <laughs> Do you remember, Roger, which way, which way did you vote? Remembers the day. <laughs> we'll leave uh, there's I mean, a new, there's a new cabinet member. There's it's a, a long time member. ago. It's a long it's time ago. Time. Jerry's probably quite right, but <laughs> I've got to tax my memory on that one. <laughs> Sorry, Al. There's a new cabinet member. Yeah, there's a new, and it's not, it's not Roger. There's a new cabinet member of housing. So let's ask Shabrana if she'll come to a future meeting. It's Karen McCarthy. Well, she's the chair. She's the chair. Um, of scrutiny, um, we, we, not of scrutiny, of the, sorry, not scrutiny at all, of the planning committee, chair of the planning committee, but there's also a cabinet member. So do you remember we did have Sharon Thompson come and talk about a number of issues that overlapped. Mm. It wasn't planning, but it was housing, and it was in regards to the HMO legislation. Um, we can well, chase again. We've asked a number of times. We've had this come up repeatedly at ward forums, and I agree there's never really... Well, clear a satisfactory answer. So we can ask again. Board forums, I'm sorry to say, don't work because you will never get a council cabinet member to actually admit why they take years to implement legislation. The idea of parliament, parliamentary statutes is that they're enforced immediately. And I think we've seen on the night on today's news about the, the Sarah Everard case, you nip it in the bud. You start with the offence and you have a zero tolerance approach and that is what is required. It's the same thing when the gentleman, the police mentioned HMOs. The responsibility for HMOs is Birmingham City Council Housing Department, not the police. And that is the whole point. They're fobbing people off to other agencies it doesn't work and indeed the ward forums we i think we is it about the third or fourth year we've discussed the enforcement crisis we need a fresh approach i agree as you know yes it's a real shame and at some point that building will be decrepit to what's close to it now and it's a real loss if it is it's a glorious well, it, it's decrepit but i mean that yeah future uses is one but the the issue which I think the council have missed is if uh, any predatory external actor wants to come into this community, they know they can get away with it because they know BC won't enforce. And that is the attitude we have to change. Um, and I presume the, off the, the reason the officers can't discuss it is I believe they probably don't properly agree with the policy which has been thrust upon them. So the intention is to change the policy to have a zero tolerance approach and it's like any criminal offense you nip it in the bud when it happens at exactly that moment yeah i agree it would certainly free up more space to you know especially when there's a housing crisis and a social housing crisis and you know it's a fairly obvious solution isn't it kitchens there there's rooms 
there's everything there for them. There's a job centre across the road. There's um, nearby supermarkets. I mean, you could you could nationalise all empty buildings and make it all social housing. But uh, I'll, well, run on that, I'll run on that platform another time. Well, what have we seen on the news tonight? Midlands News, uh, special educational needs yet again coming up. These are the issues uh, yeah. which actually concern people. Totally agree. Is there any questions around what Jerry's raised? And we will look to, again, once again, we'll look to get some officers to report back in future on the King George and the bigger problem of not enforcing uh, any of the regulations around planning. Ali, can I just uh, ask, it might have already been yes. answered, but my internet's a little bit dodgy. Um, the last I heard was that it was being turned into luxury apartments. Is that now not happening? What's the situation there? Go on, Jerry. Uh, no, <laughs> in a word. Um, I think the Mr. Khan withdrew his planning application, but it's a well-known tactic is for a site owner to enter a planning application. In other words, the city council yeah. might do something. Okay. And then the uh, landlord or owner um, drums up a planning application. It was never going to succeed because I think he wanted luxury flats there. Well, if you're going to live in a luxury flat, the one location you don't do it is on the corner of Tesla Lane and Bristol Road South opposite the job centre with um, all the mess of the Bristol Road flats and the other side that's hardly consistent with luxury flats. So we, we do his application. Well known tactic. Thanks, well, I, I will just say that the conversation, the last conversation I had with Mr. Khan is that that was going ahead. So I'm, I'm obviously quite surprised um, that, you know, well, um, that that's the case. Conspicuous by his absence on site. That's the problem, isn't it? There's been no, the, the purpose of a Town and Country Planning Act notice is for the owner to carry out the works. And the sensible thing for Mr. Khan to have done would be to site X board so that nobody could cause any further damage. I mean, there's been windows ripped out. It's enormous expense that's going to cost. Uh, so, and and expe expense to the police every time they have to come out because there's people in there. You know, I, could, I, I do agree with that. Yeah, but it's. Um, <sighs> It's, yeah, going back to the original problem, um, it shouldn't take four years. This is in the middle of a what is quite a good residential area. It shouldn't take four years. The onus is on the council, not the owner. It is the council, which is supposed to be the, uh, the law-abiding body. Ollie, can I, can, I, can I speak? Is Andrew here? Yeah. Uh, Andrew Colson. Of course you can, Andrew. Uh, just to say, I think it would be quite sensible to in see if we could get an officer from the planning department to come and talk about the general process of how enforcement takes place. And, you know, how what, what actions happen and what happens if they're thwarted and what the various steps are. I mean, it's, the council has gone some way down the line of enforcement, but there are very strict rules about this grade two listed buildings uh, and they are you know to be preserved if at all possible and it's amazing what can be done to bring grade two listed buildings in very bad states of repair back into use now if we if we invited if, if we had an officer who we spoke about the general ways this works then we could also ask this officer to look up where the, where the council is on this case in particular, so that if questions came up about it, you'd get a more informed position, at least on where the council is with it all. And I think if we took a line like that, um, we might get somewhere. It's, but I would, what I've heard, it's not that the council is completely inactive, but it, it isn't making progress in the way that we would all want. And, and certainly the, there's a real danger of loss of much of the most valuable internal fittings, especially in windows and goodness knows what else, which characterise that building. And, and, and it would be a big loss. 
Yeah, you agree. Well, let's la ask an officer. You know what would be good as well to ask the officer to come and explain the dangers to the changes to planning law in which we could then see people just do what they want to multiple buildings for, for very cheap, very terrible housing. So a kind of false solution to the housing problem with terrible builds. Jerry, one quick last point and then we're going to move on. Just coming back on Andrew's point there. Um, the council is actually under a duty because it's they can see that it's a nuisance. It's causing a nuisance to the general public. That comes up to the criminal burden of proof. Um, now, I think it, the actual materials you use or whatever it costs is by the bike. It will cost a lot of money. But um, it goes back to the uh, idea of zero tolerance. The minute you give somebody a, a site owner any leeway they will take it and that is what has happened and the problem gets worse and worse and worse so maybe we'll get something done now i hope so brilliant thank you sorry just trying to pull the agenda up on my telephone ah brilliant so um thank you for that jerry i always appreciate you bringing things to the meetings and i know you said you feel the ward forums on working, but this is going to sound very twee, but at least I, we get the chat. And honestly, like I like it. I like that we get to see regular residents in that we may not always get the resolutions we're looking for, but I will, we're at least building community yeah. slowly, too slowly, but slowly moving forwards together. So I appreciate your input, Jerry. Okay. We've got some officers from Highways on the call who are going to talk about a few different bits and pieces and then take some questions. Reveal yourselves, Highway officers. I'm not sure who it is, actually. Have they not come, Kay? They have, yeah. Shafax on the oh, line, Shafax. on the call. He's there, he just needs to unmute himself, I think. Uh, right? Oh, yeah, of course, Shafax there. BCC at the start of your name. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. Safcat is Marie Brown okay. here. Hello, oh, Marie's here, sorry. Hello, Marie. hello. Marie. Safcat should be here to up update us on some schemes and that. Um, uh, sorry for the background noise. I'll mute myself because I'm not at home. I'll mute myself. But Safkat, are you here, Safkat? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm just a uh, few minutes. I think I'll talk about this uh, uh, query lane. Um, that's uh, we have a, a different types of uh, waiting restriction, uh, single yellow line, double yellow lines. Uh, all the work is complete now. It's only the uh, ceiling of TROs, uh, that is in progress. Uh, so once we have a sealed TROs, uh, then uh, these, the waiting restriction can be uh, enforced. Um, so that's, I think, just a short brief, which uh, I have to say. Um, any Anything on this uh, scheme, which is all, all, it is the scheme is complete on ground. But it's just that the sealing of TROs that is uh, in progress. So presently, as it is now, this cannot be enforced by our enforcement team. OK. Thank you. I'm really pleased that work is complete. I have not been down to see it. One of the problems with long COVID means I don't do my two or three times a week walking around the ward, down quarry and up past yours, Randall, down past yours, Andrew, and back. So I have not noticed that works done. Really pleased that Quarry Lane is sorted. I, I don't think there's anyone on this call from that block of the ward, is there? Is anyone on from the train station at Quarry Lane end? That's a shame because there was, there was a huge amount of energy around these changes, the big push. In fact, Kirsten, you were at the meeting where we talked about that at length, actually. So I'm really pleased we've got them done, but I am aware that some residents felt they could have been different. So I was hoping they'd be on this call to feed that back. Because, you know, we, 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 with road changes, it's never perfect, is it? It's always compromise. Um, anyway, pleased it's done. Pleased that meeting that seems an age ago, Kirsten, got some resolution that we, uh, Kirsten and a whole load of other residents alongside Kirsten pushed me to bring change there. So we got something done, so that's excellent. Any questions? Oh, Marie, have you got any feedback on any other highway bits and pieces? No, no, sorry, I've got no updates for you, Councillor, no. All right, good to, nice, see you. Nice good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to hear you. 
I miss seeing people in person. Hopefully we'll do that again before I'm done. Yeah. Any questions for our two highways officers? Come on, yes, there's Ollie. always questions. Yes, Ollie, I, I would, I'm confused about all of this because question of potholes has to come up. Um, there are potholes on the Bristol Road South. Uh, all these roads locally were resurfaced just a few years ago and they're all cracking up uh, and can't take the traffic or they were done in a poor way. Um, but you get a situation on the Bristol Road South where there are potholes present and then work people come along and fill up one or two of them and make a reasonable job of it. But they don't move 10 feet further along to do the others that are there. I can't for the life of me understand why they don't get tasked with doing all the potholes at the same time because they've spent money to get on site. It can't take much more cost to fill in the remaining potholes, some of which could bring a cyclist off. Um, and I'm looking at potholes on the Bristol Road south from Tessel Lane up towards uh, Longbridge Lane. Uh, where there have been substantial holes in the road causing people to swerve cars to miss them. And uh, some have been filled in, but the rest have just been left. Why on earth don't they do all of them at the same time? Can't understand it. Seems a terrible waste of money. You should have to report each one individually. <laughs> I think, I mean, our two highways officers are welcome to come in on this. I, I think this is a question. It might be good, Kate, to see if we can get Lucy O'Grady on the call who oversees. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Yeah, we could do with somebody from Kia to explain. Yeah, I was trying to remember who it is now, not in same office, same person. Yeah, Lucy O'Grady or um, Stuart Cross is the local um, steward. Oh, he's lovely. Let's ask them yes. both. Yes, I think we ought to invite him next time to explain. Yes, he's, he has been. He hasn't been when we've done the online ones, so it's a while now. But Stuart has been to a cut two of our in presence meetings, I think. Um, but I agree. Like a good example is is the roundabout at the top of mine, just before you come around to yours, Roger. They did an incredible job on the roundabout. It was in a, you know three days of, of incredible action, but they they didn't go any further than the roundabout, and this this hole's just past the edges of where they did. And obviously they've got to stop somewhere, but doing a square four metres seems silly when you've got all your vehicles out and you've shut the road. Um, I, I don't know whether you saw on Midlands today that wonderful new machine developed by JCB that cost, I think, about £130,000. Now, that's quite a, a lot of money, but it um, automates the development of and repair of potholes and does it in one third of the time. And therefore, there is a very big cost benefit to anybody tasked with filling in these potholes. And it can move from one to the other as it moves along the road. It seems to me that that's the sort of thing we want to see in Birmingham, something that can be done in an automated way, far faster than anything else who I'm competing with. But it's a lot of other people. Um, so, you know, when we look forward to a bit of innovation uh, and a bit of economizing by getting the right equipment to do this job i agree and a hundred thousand pounds isn't much right it, you know it probably only buys you a thousand plastic gloves if you get a COVID contract so you know not much money yeah right yeah. joyce do you want to speak about saint lawrence so, sorry councillor armstrong somebody's got oh, their sorry. hands up they've had the hand up for a little while it? um, it's joyce is it joyce no it's not joyce it's i think it's rob is that rob me I can't see that at all. I'm really sorry. Not? And there's a question in the chat as well, I think, but I've just lost my chat box altogether, so I can't get back into that for some but reason. There's a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah. Hello. But, yeah. yeah, there we go. It's Rob, I think. Hello, it's Rob. Uh, I've joined the meeting tonight because uh, our ward meeting seems to be non-existent at the moment. I don't know what's going on with our representative there, um, but I've got a concern about the speed limit on the Bristol Road. After the debacle of the Buzz Lane and it's been reduced to 30 mile an hour, when are we going to have proper speed limit signage? The leader of the council assured me that it's in hand, but that was four months ago. All the 40 mile an hour signs that are there are starting to, uh, that were blacked out, are starting to come through again now. And we've had a, a new rectangular 30 mile an hour speed limit sign put up on both carriages to and from the city but these signs are not recognised in the highway code 
So it's just utter confusion. If it's 30, let's have 30 mile an hour. If it's 40, let's have 40 mile an hour. Let's not dither and dally in the middle, please. What ward are you? What ward do you live in, Rob? Uh, Longbridge and West Eath. The uh, Conservative yes. councillor has been very active. I've seen nothing of the Labour councillor for many, many months. Well, you're very welcome on this call. Um, Thank you very I much. Agree, I agree the signage is confusing. Um, uh, I I'll spot have to get, oh. Yeah, I'll have to get, sorry, councillor. Yes, yes, Marie Brown again. Go on, Marie. Yeah. Yes, um, I totally understand with, um, forgive me for calling you by your first name, Rob's comments. He is right. We have had a lot of complaints about confusing signs. I'm not quite sure. But because there's an ongoing project they're doing, um, they have black tag. They haven't done a very good job. And yes, they are coming through again. Now, Cloney, it's Project's head office who's managing this scheme. So I'll Cloney ask them for an update tomorrow and ask them to update you, Councillor. So what yeah, I well, that's ask. Really. What's the what's the bigger project happening there? Well, I think it's to do with the bus lane, introducing the bus lane. Because um, I mean, from from the office, uh, Vineyard Road, into city, past the, the orthopedic, into city side, um, they're introducing a bus lane there. And uh, I know RW was doing some changes to the carriageway and that. So um dare not say anymore in case i get it wrong and let's have Kat not oh, yeah it. let's not guess let's let's have Kate invite someone yes. to the next meeting to answer rob's question and, and rob yes. as i said you're very welcome on the call um Ollie, 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 i hope they're not introducing that. the bus line because oh, they've oh. just They've just painted it out again, haven't they? Yeah, let's not let's just backtrack before, <laughs> no, before we front page please news. Don't get into this. <laughs> let's not get front page news over things that aren't true. <laughs> don't get me in more trouble. I'm in trouble enough. Lewis wants to come in. Lewis. Um, just... Oh, you're cutting out. I just wanted to say that um quite a few uh, quite a few citizens have, have reported to me that they've actually been um given 85 driving down the Bristol Road. Um thinking that it's 40 miles an hour when it's actually 30 miles an hour um they've, they've asked me to sort of raise that tonight as well have they said if it's from the police camera because oh because i don't think that i probably shouldn't say this i don't know if there's cameras are on Let, well there must be that. because um it was one of our Unless it's the police van with the with the can you get them to can you get them to email me like even if they're not on my ward because Jenny Cam well, uh, well, I've got to be honest, Jenny cameras I'm aware of, Councillor, which are in operational, are the in the edge of Aston ward from Priory Road um, to the McDonald's. Yeah, you probably should. We we'll probably shouldn't hear that on a recorded call, or that the <laughs> city's cameras aren't on. <laughs> so I don't hey, know what uh, there. There are mobile. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's go through the chair, which is in fact me. Um, what we're going to do is, Lewis, I'd like you to get residents to email me if they've been fined and it's because the signage is wrong. I will look into that. Rob, we're going to ask somebody to come and give some facts on what's happening on that road and sort the signage. Uh, Joyce, we're going to come to you next because you've been waiting with your hand up. OK, thank Bye, you. Um, good evening, everyone. I just wondered if there'd been any updates on monitoring the speed of vehicles using St. Lawrence Road and the quantity of people rat running through, through the estate. Um, so, so Joyce, the police have just said they can do that. Sorry, haven't they? Were you on before when they said they could get the cameras? Get the cameras where? Well, they said they would have the handheld cameras. Oh, was that a speed check or something? Yeah. Well, can they do that on our road as well then? Well, I think we should ask them. I mean, I've asked before when we've been told that in meetings and it's not happened, but they have just said it. So, okay, let's 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 note that and let's chase the police. And Joyce, let's say we want that, because you've been asking for this for ages. And I'm really sorry that, that the meetings we tried to set were put off first by a pandemic and then me being sick. Both yeah. legitimate reasons, but I'm sorry this, it still hasn't happened. I know that your road is, is really dangerous and we want to try and resolve that. Um, I still controversially think dead ending one end would resolve a lot of those problems. I know that's massively controversial with lots of residents. I think that would fix a lot. Well, we can't just leave it as it is and ignore it. Something has to be done, um, including, in, in my opinion, all the city council vehicles that are also using our road as a rat run. Um, 
they've taken advantage of the pandemic when it went quiet to just get everywhere through the estate and are continuing to do it now when there's you know they just find any excuse you can't you can't actually restrict public vehicle ordinary our vehicles people who've just got cars just so that the city council vehicles can do as they please you know yeah. if it fits one it fits all of us i uh, you know i agree i do think some really strategic road changes would change the way everybody acts and it really wouldn't put many people out more than a couple of minutes difference but would no. provide some areas it they're, just safer, using, less they're just using it as an excuse yeah and, um, we're very much on the same page on that well it's probably something to campaign really hard for and make people promise who are standing for the next election i would suggest because there's an election in may and then make people uh, uh, is he council stick. election you mean there are next may 2022 hmm. So we'll get people to commit to uh, getting that done. Um, I've been, as you're well aware, I've pushed very hard for changes and I've been, I felt like we moved forward really well. I felt like we had a lot of movement just before the pandemic. I kind of feel if we'd been able to gather and really push and convince a handful of people more, we could have got the changes we were looking for, but we would possibly back fair one with some of it just because the but pandemic is so much out. Up again. Perhaps we can pick it up again and start, yeah. you know, the momentum going again, really? Uh, that word. Uh, momentum. Sorry, by me. Um, <laughs> what did you No, Joyce but let's do that. It? Joyce, let's let's look into it. I'm sure there'll be some of the residents who will volunteer to help, um, you know, gather some information and get people there hmm. thinking about it. Ollie, it, yes. if I may, just a point of information. Um, the police have been... Uh, installing or, or um, uh, turning up on the Bristol Road South just below the fire station with uh, mobile cameras recently. I've seen them on two or three occasions. So uh, that obviously is a trap that people can fall into coming down the hill past the Shell station and speeding up. So one needs to be careful about that. And I thought our police friends suggested that we actually operated the handheld cameras. Uh, to monitor speed. Volunteers, if you like, um, just to be seen to be doing something. I'm not sure that they were actually going to do it because I think he said, we'll train you to use it. Um, I'm not sure I want to stand outside my own house and flag people down for speeding because I think it might end up with a, a confrontation with somebody. But um, it, it's worth a thought if we're really desperate to do it, I think. It is worth a thought. And I'll, leave from, I'll leave for me. The, the, re the, the sorry, can I, if I may, the, the resident scheme where they become the speed monitors. I think what work. I don't think you can be prosecuted, but I think you can be sent a warning about your speeding. So I think it's only enforceable if the police are operating the equipment. But it's yeah. just a, a, a useful tool to raise awareness and encourage people to drive differently as well. So if it if it slows the traffic down by residents perhaps taking a more active part, then it can only be a good thing. It can. It should be an emergency measure, though, right? Like, I do think those kind of roles should be paid properly and trained. Yeah, yeah. Paid a salary. It's where the big society falls oh, back. Right? People aren't paid for their work. Pay for your labour. Um, OK. So, Joyce, we will look back into that. We'll see if there's any other residents who are up for helping kind of gather people together and think, start thinking about it. Thank uh, I do you. Suggest, suggest you push that for whoever's standing next to me. Uh, highway's done. Any other, right, we're at the end really, any key issues you want to raise that myself and Kate can take away for future meetings? Just just one thing from me, Ollie, if I may, and, and for the people who don't live in sort of the Mars Road, Church Road area, we've had a note put through our door from Kia about impending roadworks on Church Road. So from Bunbury Road up to the traffic lights at the centre of Northfield, which will start the week after next. So just a warning more so for, for people who won't have had the leaflet but may need to travel into Northfield. Right. Um, Thank you, Paul. We can share that. Anyone else for anything else? Sorry, Ali. One more for me, for um, from somebody else. Again, not for me. Um, about the bins, um, that quite often the the bin men are leaving the bins all over the road, mixing them all up and one thing and another. I'm sure that they're really busy and that they've got things that they need to do. 
um but and also quite a lot of things not being collected and people not really being sure why um i mean i as you know, I live in the area, so we do have this this situation ourselves. It's a it's a bit of a uh, like a Jenga game in the morning, trying to get the uh, the bins in the right the right sort of drives. Um, but yeah, I think especially for people that have got mobility issues, this is becoming a real issue to them because you know it, it, they they've got maybe people that can put the bins out for them, and then if they're not back in time um, to bring the bins back in, you know they they they're getting lost and and becoming a bit of a nightmare yeah no you're right i do i do field a lot of questions and it's one of those situations where they get resolved if i chase them but like that shouldn't be your counselor's role i don't think you know it takes a huge amount of time to chase getting the bin sorted and the system should work so i will feed that back um i mean a high percentage of them are done well but it's still a high enough percentage of those done badly to upset people and it, as you say it's, it's especially upsetting when it's people with any extra needs or mobility issues and i have had a few residents who should really get extra care and are getting not care enough with their bins Harry, go on last hands up there uh yeah very quickly uh two issues one roger and i discovered when we attended the uh law homes application for the golf course meeting planning meeting in june something very uh, worrying, we thought. Uh, Birmingham City Council, the planning committee is, as the chair says, a judicial committee. What it will therefore do is send you, if you're lucky, uh, a unique reference number so that you might be able to object individually to a planning application. That's all right. What they won't do, I understand, I think I'm correct, uh, is that they don't give any particular precedence or significance to a community objecting. Therefore, where, for instance, the community objected to the North Worcestershire Golf Club being zoned for housing, the BCC wouldn't pay any attention either to what the MP says or what the councillor says, um, which we didn't know about at all. It came as a complete surprise. So that really dramatically alters the scope of any future public participation in planning. It absolutely limits the ability of our elected representatives to actually voice their community opinion. Does anybody know anything about that? We knew nothing about it. I think planning rules I'll, are going I'll, to be massively pulled back. Sorry, who's that? Andrew? It's Andrew. Shall I, shall I speak, yeah. Ollie? Yeah. Planning yeah. is a very strange process, and it's why it would be good to be a bit more briefing about it and about, you know, about how the process of enforcement works, as well as the processes of planning applications. I mean, it's not that they won't consider community uh, activists it's that it's they only consider every single issue it's the issues it doesn't matter how many people support an issue it's the issue that matters and so yeah. they, so if, if if the issue has been raised by one person that issue should be in their reports and it, and it, and it should be considered mm. um, the fact that it's raised by a large number is 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 of slight relevance, but very little in, in when it comes to planning law. Now that doesn't mean it's not worth having meetings. It doesn't mean it's not, because you may discover other issues or other ways of putting them. Sometimes it's a matter of how you put them. So traffic is a relevant issue, but you know, it's how you, it's how you look at it. It's no point in having a, a view of traffic that says it's going to generate a lot of, uh, a lot of extra traffic if in fact the use that was there before was generating just as much traffic you know it's, it's it's issues it's you have to be quite knowledgeable to really be effective when you're making your objections the, the you can you can as an individual or a group you can object to any planning application you're aware of by just going on the council website clicking in the, the location of it and you'll get and you'll see the application there and you'll you'll see the number there so getting a number is not difficult. That, that, that's easy, but it, and it's easy way. To, and you put your application, your your objection or your comment 
Um, could be an, could be support for it. it could be, you put your comment, whatever it is, on the on the web, and it goes straight into the system that way. Um, and then, wow. if you've made an objection in your own right, you are invited to the meeting. If, if if it's a, I mean, a lot of if simple planning application, somebody wants an extension to their house, something like that, doesn't go to the committee. But the ones that are of, of any real significance, a lot of medium significance, go to the committee, and then you're invited to the committee, and uh, there is a time allowed for members of the public there to speak at the committee, which you should definitely use if you've got views about a planning application. So yeah. there are some very simple messages like that. Uh, Andrew, which, I think the point that, Andrew, I think the key point is, and I, and I and I agree here, is that people have made points, and a number of us have raised substantial complaints, and a number of us, including myself, went to the. Uh, in Spethbridge on the golf course and have been yes, fundamentally yes, ignored. Yes. Yeah, and the information wasn't even documented. For me, I'll, and we'll finish with this and then I'll do a, a little finishing bit. For me, I find two things really interesting about Blue Homes and I think they're totally unrelated. I imagine there must be. But one of those things is they get to do whatever they want, it seems, nationally. The other is they've made massive donations to the Conservative government. I'm sure they're massively un uh, unrelated, but they're the two things I notice about them. Um, is there any other business? Anything anybody wants to raise? Go on, Jerry. Again, you're on a hat trick. Hogging the agenda, but um, just as my next suggestion, uh, I think there should be mandatory training for all councillors and also MPs in what I call the core subjects. Um, it has been suggested in the media recently, but I believe that the range of subjects which any democratically elected representative now has to deal with is so complex. I believe it is fundamentally unfair, both to the elected representative and the people that they serve, if they don't have some basic subject training. Uh, and the subjects I'm thinking of are, as Andrew's just said, planning, what the law is, housing we've heard all about high modes a hugely complicated subject private rented sector law uh, building control law possibly special educational needs very much in the news <clears throat> and i believe that training should be loaded not by the local authority but by outside bodies or relevant experts because i think the era of the amateur in local representation was finished a long time ago. I believe we now need a much more professional approach in the year 2021 uh, to bring a much better service to uh, local constituents. Yeah, and having one councillor pay awards a joke, right? Like, like, I'm really fairly capable and I'm really active and I'm really committed and I went part-time and work and I poured myself out for this ward, but it's still not enough, right? Like. Whoever's in place after me next May, however good or bad they are, one person's not enough. Um, well, yeah, it's, a terrible, it's a terrible system. Many of the things that people have been contributing on tonight are a criminal offence, for instance. <laughs> um, one normally associates the word criminal offence with a, a legal process. Um, so it is important, I think, to move councillors on. Um, the era of, um, it's a perfectly legitimate thing to want to represent your community, but to do it properly and professionally, which I think we are entitled to, we need both councillors and MPs to be trained in the subject areas which they're going to deal with. I think that's a really valid point. To be fair to the council, they have increased the training that we get, and I think from next year, there'll be much more than when I started a few years ago and i'm sure then when randall when you started you know they have really increased it and fair play at them um so let's see what they do next year i'm going to wrap it up there because i've asked twice for any other business it's been really lovely to see lots of you keith really nice to see you on the call first time on i think last time we spoke you were at a general election hustings either brexit party or ukip so nice to see you again maybe see you on the next one um see you all soon good night good night